Hi, Sean McCracken here from Hotel News Now, here with James Carroll, President and CEO of Crestline. Uh, James, what's, what's new and interesting in the world of Crestline? Uh, well, Crestline's having, uh, having a great year so far. Uh, we've had some great growth in our portfolio. Uh, uh, picked up five new management agreements so far this year uh, from three different ownership groups. Uh, a couple of those groups are folks we've worked with uh, in the past, uh, which is always reassuring, knowing that uh, owners that we have been managing hotels for for a number of years are coming back to us and wanting to do more business with Crestline. So that's it's always a great sign for me that we're at least doing some things right. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, we also have a new ownership group that we're working with. Uh, so that helps uh, further our pipeline, give us some growth uh, both now and hopefully in the future. Uh, so a uh, good year so far and, and very exciting for us. Now you guys recently announced uh, what $300 million fund was it? Correct. So uh, Crestline is uh, you know a third party manager that's that's our business uh, so that announcement uh, you know we talked to a lot of our owners before that came out letting them know that uh, that was not Crestline entering the real estate business. Mm -hmm. uh, we are uh, absolutely focused on, on third party management uh, but what we're trying to do is uh, find ways to continue growing the company and uh, in the past we've grown the company through simply uh, you know negotiating good third party contracts uh, we've gone out and sourced deals for owners that we have and and uh, grown the business that way uh, we've partnered with real estate companies uh, we've also in the past owned real estate ourselves uh, for the purpose of uh, you know renovating or uh, cleaning up uh, stabilizing performance of the asset and then selling that to an ownership group that we work with to uh, secure a good solid management agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what uh, we're seeking to do with the fund that's been made available to us. Uh, our part, our uh, parent company uh, has made that money available to us and uh, their mandate is go out and grow the management business. And so we'll use that capital uh, in any way that we can that will further that. And uh, if that means uh, uh, sliver equity deals or um, uh, long-term leases, which is something a lot of our, uh, our partners and uh, our competitors don't do. Uh, we'll use that capital as a, a source of a guarantee for long-term leases. Or uh, if necessary, if we see assets out there that uh, none of our owners are able to uh, purchase, uh, maybe go out and purchase those assets, stabilize them, and, and make it something that we can then turn to one of our owners and, and uh, get management from. Mm -hmm. So what's the environment out there, just in general, for a third-party manager right now? Uh, you know, it's pretty competitive. The third-party management business has always uh, been a very competitive business. So we are uh, you know, continuing to see a lot of uh, deals where uh, we come to that have uh, three, four, or five management companies competing for those deals. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, go after those uh, somewhat, uh, but we prefer, uh, as we've seen so far this year, to go do deals with people that we've already uh, done hotel deals with mm -hmm. uh, or have been referred to by owners that we already have. Uh, and as opposed to just competing purely on some kind of a numbers basis yeah. with another management company, um, secure deals through our, our reputation, uh, through the skill that we bring to the table, through our experience, uh, performance, and that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. while a very competitive environment, uh, we work very hard to make sure all of our owners are very happy with us so that uh, we keep contracts as long as possible so we're not trying to constantly yeah. uh, replace them. Yeah. And then when the opportunity does come up uh, for us to go after a contract, Hopefully not uh, be in some kind of a bidding war, but mm -hmm. win it more on our, our reputation and our yeah. performance. So you hear, at least anecdotally, uh, through shows like this or just elsewhere, that the transaction environment for ownership might be slow, a little slower right now than usual. Um, we all know, you know ownership change is often uh, yeah. portends a management mm -hmm. change. I mean, has that born true uh, from your perspective? Are you guys seeing the same number of opportunities as you always would? Uh, no, I think what you're saying is true. Uh, there seems to be less, uh, less transactions, less turnover. And so that natural catalyst for growth of the management company has not been there. Mm -hmm. uh, that is why I think, you know, again, as I said before, it's critical for us to be uh, doing a great job for the owners we have, uh, because while slowly those owners will typically, you know, acquire additional hotels mm -hmm. at a slower pace, and it's critical we not lose that opportunity because there's not going to be 10 transactions that yeah. month that we're uh, going to be able to look at. There's going to be one or two, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that we can secure those. Uh, but that's also, I think, part of the reason why 
uh, our parent company made capital available to us was to uh, prime the pump a little bit uh, and hmm. try to find opportunities uh, that maybe wouldn't come to us naturally or that we could create through having capital made available mm -hmm. and uh, use that as a way to continue growing the business uh, during times where the transaction market is slower. Mm -hmm. So it seems like we're in a kind of, well, I'll say interesting to be kind moment for operators in general with, you know, metrics seem to be slowing across the board. Uh, I mean, it, it's still growth, but it's a slower growth than we've seen a couple years ago. Labor market's very tight. Um, I mean, from your perspective, how do you guys manage those, those hurdles or is it still looking pretty good for you? Now, there's definitely hurdles out there. Uh, one of the things that has helped us in the last uh, five to six years is we've had a lot of growth in the company. Mm -hmm. And uh, economy of scale definitely uh, plays a part in keeping your costs down. Uh, labor, as you mentioned, I think is probably one of the biggest challenges. Mm -hmm. And that scale has also uh, served us well as far as the labor market, mm -hmm. where we have uh, areas of the country where we have a concentration of hotels. Mm -hmm. And I think employees see the opportunity to mm -hmm. come to Crestline, uh, be able to stay within maybe a, a certain geographic area that they have family or other commitments mm -hmm. to, uh, yet still be able to grow their career and mm -hmm. find opportunities to move up through the organization. Uh, so I think scale has helped us with that challenge, uh, but it's definitely uh, affecting a, a lot of folks. And our uh, good thing is we communicate very well with our owners and let them know what we're seeing and what the challenges are. Uh, most of our owners are very professional, uh, you know, real estate and hotel owners. Mm -hmm. uh, they see what's going on in the market. And, uh, you know, we're necessary. We've uh, had, you know, challenging discussions uh, at budget time about what we need to do to stabilize the labor force. Uh, and there's a cost to doing that, but there's a cost, uh, I think a greater cost, most of our owners feel, to uh, not stabilizing the labor force and having constant turnover, yeah. which is a lot more expensive than, uh, you know, potentially taking a little better care of the employees that you have mm -hmm. currently at your properties. Yeah, I'd imagine that that would only be more so true now than uh, given how low unemployment is. Absolutely, yeah. So um, what's What's the next big thing for Crestline? What do you foresee for the future? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know there's, that there's a next big thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for us, again, the, the, the growth of the management company is what we're focused on. Uh, we are not uh, seeking, you know, a really fast growth. Uh, we don't want to be uh, one of the behemoths of the management yeah. business. I, I think it's hard to take really good care of your owners, make them feel uh, important, uh, let them know that they're getting the attention that they deserve so that you can mm -hmm. uh, drive performance at their asset, understanding the specific needs that owner has, what, mm -hmm. the, what their need is for that asset, what their yeah. timeline is for that asset, what they're trying to do with it. And I think that's our advantage. Um, you know, I think we're a, a really good size. We're not yeah. so big that our owners uh, are numbers and uh, mm -hmm. not personal to us. Uh, we're not so small that we don't have the economies of scale and the yeah. uh, leadership and management talent at, at uh, the Crestline level that can really drive performance. So I think yeah. we're in that really good sweet spot uh, where we can take fabulous care of our owners. And uh, I'm, I'm content to see the company grow at a um, steady pace, but a nice slow pace where yeah. Uh, we can make sure that the talent that's backing up the performance uh, continues to be there as we grow the company, mm -hmm. uh, not grow at such a clip that I can't assure that I have good talent and then maintain yeah. good performance at the properties. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, I like the fact that I know every single one of my owners yeah. uh, and, and uh, know them personally, and I want to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, James. I appreciate your time. Absolutely. Thank you.